Here we'll learn about pericardial disease. To begin, let's review the pericardium and its position within the mediastinum. First, draw the heart and great vessels. Show the diaphragm and lungs. Then, show that the fibrous pericardium forms a loose bag around the heart. It's attached to the central tendon of the diaphragm. Next, show that the serous pericardium comprises two layers in a space. First, the parietal layer, which lines the fibrous pericardium. Then, the visceral layer, which is the outer covering of the heart. Thus, the visceral layer of the pericardium is the epicardium of the heart. Between the parietal and visceral layers, show the pericardial cavity and write that this small space typically contains less than 50 mL of fluid, which allows for free movement of the heart. The pericardium has a limited ability to respond to injury, which is often key to its pathology. Write that in response to injury, the pericardium increases fluid production. This fluid can contain fibrin and inflammatory cells. And write that the pericardium can distend to hold this fluid, but only up to a point. Let's learn how these responses can lead to pericardial pathologies. We'll start with pericarditis because it's the most common pericardial disease and because it can lead to other diseases. First indicate that pericarditis is inflammation, the itis of the pericardium. Show that signs and symptoms include sharp chest pain which may radiate to the shoulder. The pain is often relieved upon sitting or upon leaning forward. During auscultation, a pericardial friction rub can often be heard. Indicate that this rub is characterized as a squeaking or scratching sound. Next, write that pericarditis is associated with the following elevated biomarkers. Elevated white blood cell count, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or ESR, C-reactive protein, or CRP, and in some cases, cardiac troponin. ECG changes are clinically important and can help distinguish pericarditis from myocardial infarction. These changes are often described in four stages. The first, the earliest stage, is characterized by diffuse concave ST segment elevation and PR segment depression, which can be seen in most leads, all except for AVR. Note that in myocardial infarction, the ST segments are typically convex and not diffuse. In stage 2, normalization of the ST and PR segments occurs, and the T waves flatten. Then in stage 3, the T waves invert. In stage 4, the T waves either normalize or persist as inverted waves. Indicate that the treatment for pericarditis includes aspirin, NSAIDs, and colchicine. Corticosteroids may be considered if these drugs fail. Let's consider some important causes of pericarditis. Be aware that many cases are idiopathic. First, write that pathogens, especially HIV, Coxsackie virus, streptococcus, staphylococcus, and tuberculosis can cause pericarditis. It's thought that many idiopathic cases are actually caused by viruses. Additional causes of pericarditis include metabolic disorders, such as kidney failure, autoimmune disorders, particularly rheumatoid arthritis and systemic lupus erythematosus, cancers, especially the breast or lung, and Hodgkin's lymphoma, drugs, including penicillin and some anticoagulants, and various events, including myocardial infarction, cardiac surgery or trauma, and radiation therapy. Be aware that causes of pericarditis vary by population. For example, in richer countries, viral and post-surgical causes prevail, whereas in poorer countries, tuberculosis is a significant cause. Also be aware that some causes are associated with specific types of pericarditis. For example, some bacteria can cause purulent pericarditis. Lastly, indicate that constrictive pericarditis can occur when chronic inflammation leads to fibrosis or calcification of the pericardium. Show that this produces a tough, inelastic shell around the heart that impairs diastolic filling. This impaired diastolic filling can lead to peripheral venous congestion and Cushmall sign. Show that Cushmall sign is characterized by increased jugular venous pressure during inspiration. Next, let's learn about pericardial effusion. Indicate that it's characterized by the presence of excessive fluid, in some cases 
hundreds of mLs in the pericardial cavity. The causes of pericardial effusion are similar to and include pericarditis. Recall that increased fluid production is one of the ways in which the pericardium responds to injury. Indicate that hemorrhagic effusions can also occur and tend to result from trauma, myocardial infarctions, and vessel rupture. And write that diagnosis often entails echocardiogram, CT, or MRI, which allows us to see the quantity and location of the excess pericardial fluid. Indicate that if pericardial effusion occurs in the absence of pericarditis, the patient may not experience any symptoms. Pericardial friction rub may be heard, but not necessarily. And important ECG changes include tachycardia, electrical alternans, and low QRS voltage. Lastly, let's learn about cardiac tamponade, also called pericardial tamponade. Show that this potentially fatal disorder occurs when the pressure from the pericardial effusion impedes filling. Recall that the pericardium can distend to hold excess fluid only up to a point. Write that cardiac tamponade occurs when the elastic limit of the pericardium is surpassed and the accumulating pericardial fluid exerts pressure on the heart. Be aware that this is most likely to occur when fluid accumulates rapidly, but can also occur when a large volume of fluid accumulates over time. Indicate that when the pressures on the heart that impede filling are too high, cardiac tamponade can lead to shock. To learn about obstructive and other types of shock, click the link in our notes. Key clinical signs to look out for include tachycardia, high jugular venous pressure, and pulses paradoxus. Show that pulses paradoxus is characterized by a 10 millimeter per mercury or more drop in arterial blood pressure upon inspiration. Lastly, write that treatment includes drainage of the excess fluid from the pericardial cavity. This concludes our diagram.